Hello and welcome to another FA06 video. In this video this afternoon, we are looking at a number of questions that were brought by interested persons who have the units. We are going to be looking at the pads and what they can do. We are going to be looking at sustain and how to get it to stones to sustain without the use of the hold pedal and uh, we are also going to be looking at some aspects of the studio set. To change the use of your pads from samples, which is what they are now when you see this reddish colour, Those are audio samples that come with the default song which is loading whenever you turn on the keyboard. Now you can easily change the default song to whatever song you want and if there are samples associated with it, those samples will be under the keys. Now what would you want to do? Well the first thing you would have to do is press this pad utility button here at the top. When you press the pad utility button, you see a screen with several options and this soft key here under 6 is marked pad mode. When you touch that, you go to the pad mode and notice that you have 8 green buttons. Well, one of them is actually red. The red one is the one that's currently selected, which is the sample pad. But you can see here on the display what the pads relate to. Of course, the simplest thing to do is to press 5 here, which switches the pads to numeric mode. Now, when the pads are in numeric mode, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, which is serving as 0. So basically those are the only, the only ones that are active, only the ones that are lighted in green are active. And when you push them, the default is of course to change the voice. Uh, now, the range of changing that you can do here with these keys depends on which particular type you are in. If the current voice being shown is an SNS, which of course is the virtual analog modeling synthesizer, then there are far more tones in that category than in the other categories. So you can enter things like uh, 1045, 46, 1046. The display will flash. And notice that these two buttons here, bank and hold, are flashing. Uh, the hold is enter and the bank is cancel. So if you press the bank button, it will just cancel and go back to the voice that was there before. And if you just press the hold button, it will accept it. And now we have 1046 tone in the SNS voices. Hover dive number two. Now, the thing about it is, if you change the type to, say, acoustic instruments, or the, basically what they call the, the model, I forget the word that Roland likes to use, a uh, supernatural, that's it. If you change it to one of these supernatural acoustic instruments, which you cannot do with the pad, that's the amazing thing. You would have to do that using the arrow keys, and then you would change the type here, bring the uh, highlight to type, and change it using the rotary dial to say uh, PCMS or the acoustic instruments 
then you would not be able to use all of the keys. If you punch in a number higher than the possible stored value of that, you it will just flash at you and you will have to use a lower number. So I regard the numeric pad mode here as pretty useless. Pretty useless, I have to say that on the video because basically the jog wheel or dial here allows you to change things far faster and most people are not going to actually remember the numbers of the tones with thousands of tones in this thing you're far more likely to remember a name like Saw Lead One than you are to remember a number like 812 I mean what kind of people memorize tone numbers in a machine that has thousands of tones so this actual pad mode numeric entry is a pretty useless feature of the pads now if you pad the pad, press the pad utility you can look and then select pad mode you can look at some of the other options that you can change for your pads partial select is basically only used when editing tones to turn partials on and off part mute and part select you would see in your sequencer and of course mute and solo part mute and part solo when you select a pad mode where is it saved it is saved with the studio set it's saved with the studio set so you can select any pad mode you want anytime you feel like but if you ever want to have it return to that after you touch anything you have to save it with the studio set so when you press the right button you have basically three options on the right menu studio set tone and song and basically if you're creating music creating music on your role on the FAO 6 then you have to save these things in the right order or you're totally wasting your time if you edit a tone you instantly have to save it under tone or write it to a tone before you select another tone otherwise all your changes are lost and it doesn't even warn you that your changes are going to be lost it has a little tick that turns yellow a little um, thing of yellow tick that appears in the uh, display which I've showed you in previous videos to indicate that you have changed something but it doesn't um, warn you if you go and load something else what it will do is when you press the right and you say select it will warn you about overwriting memories on the card or in the internal um, thing but it will not uh, warn you in the buffer the edit buffer where you're doing your editing so you need to get in the habit if you have these keyboards you need to get in the habit of saving things regularly if you're doing editing so that you don't lose what sound that wonderful sound you've created quickly save it to tone now the mixer settings are saved with the studio set so if you save the song before saving the studio set you're sunk you have to save the studio set before you save the song because all the song saves is the samples that are currently on the keyboard along with the actual MIDI sequencer information basically the MIDI's in whatever channels you have recorded 
So what happens to a lot of people is they go and save the song but they have not saved the studio set and when they load back the song all of a sudden the whole keyboard is defined differently and when they press play on the song all sorts of things are playing different voices different tones and uh, they're out to sea without a paddle so get in the habit of saving the studio set right before you save the song and you'll be good to go so those three things are what are saved separately here with the right menu now if you have the sequencer called up and you're doing something that you want to be able to turn on and off the parts then the best thing to do is either select the part select the mute or the solo function and then when you press them it will mute or solo the particular tracks that you want to do honestly I have not found much useful use in spite of all the possible uh, features that you have here when you select pad mode as I said, you've got do it yourself. Just press pad utility and press pad mode in the bottom soft menu, and you will see that you have eight possible things. You have sample pads, part select, part mute, part solo. Then you have the numeric mode I just showed you, partial switch select and keyboard switch and keyboard switch group now the keyboard switch group is particularly useful if you program it right for quickly switching between different layers please go and watch my video for the keyboard switch group and uh, you will see that you can quickly in the middle of a song hit one of the pads and uh, completely switch uh, sounds, layered sounds, complete layering you might have one layering that's been set up and then you want to go to another layering so the keyboard switch group is actually very very useful and that was a recent feature that was added after the initial program so the other question that was asked on the chat in the uh, thing was can we trigger the pads from the keys rather than pressing the pad button they wanted to trigger the pads from the keys at least that's what I think they wanted to do based on what they posted now here is where it gets really powerful if you want to trigger the pads or the samples under the pads from the keyboard what you need to do is you need to make sure that you come down here to track 16 which is the pad track as you can see we have scrolled down to pad notice it says pad there in yellow and as long as the track 16 is highlighted the pads will trigger from the keyboard make sure that you've got something on the pads in other words they should have various <coughs> Once you have it highlighted here, you've got stuff on the pads, and you've got the pad track highlighted.
So now you see that you are able to trigger the pads from the keyboard and that's how you do it. The last thing we're going to do in this video is we're going to get the keyboard to sustain. Now we've just selected Solid 3 and we see that it has a little bit of little bit of delay on it. In the first method we press shift and then select tone edit and then we move to the amp tab and we move the highlight to the release here and uh, we wind up the release to make it higher. We have to make sure that the green select bar the green select bar must be under the partial that's active. Notice here that the pink is on partial 2 and uh, you can change the select bar by going to there and moving the arrow. See it's gone there? So you want the green one to be um, on the on the one that is thing and then you come down here and you can raise and lower the release time. Now when we do that, when we do that people, we get endless sustain on the same voice. Listen. My hand is away from the keyboard and listen to how long it sustains. So you have the option to get any sound to sustain as long as you like simply by increasing the release time or ADSR the release time on the particular tone that you are concerned with but make sure that the highlight is on the amp the amp is highlighted okay that's the one that will control how long the volume remains now if you've uh, changed the sustain so that it is sustaining a long time after you take your key your fingers off the keyboard then notice that you will have the yellow tick I was talking about so you need to save that tone by pressing the right button selecting tone there it is and saving it to a memory before you do anything else other your otherwise your settings will be lost